British museum owned by Cambridge University recently overhauled its art exhibits and introduced new signage warning that paintings of the British countryside could trigger dark nationalist feelings. Another sign in the exhibit explains, quote, Landscape paintings were also always entangled with national identity. The countryside was seen as a direct link to the past and therefore a true reflection of the essence of a nation. Now that part is true. Particular peoples live in a specific place, and beautiful depictions of that place can speak powerfully to their sense of identity and belonging. What's interesting is how often the left now feels compelled to warn us about the dangers of beauty. Our progressive ruling elites have created a small, ugly, and artificial world, and they're right to fear the power that natural beauty holds to shatter that illusion. Like many people, I've lived most of my life as a thoroughly modern Philistine. As an advanced and sophisticated person, I dismissed beauty as a value and often saw unnecessary adornment as an ostentatious waste that hindered efficiency. I've been a Christian since I was young, but even in my interactions with the divine, I had a very Protestant understanding of sacred spaces. Why would anyone build a giant cathedral when the people of God could gather in a strip mall or a warehouse and give the rest of the money to the poor? The notion of beauty as an elevation of the human spirit was always treated as a backward and outdated notion held by self-important aristocrats in less enlightened times. We like to think of ourselves as highly rational, so it can be very difficult to recognize how critical aesthetics are to our way of being. If the things we see every day are beautiful, if they stir our souls and connect us to the divine, that keeps us grounded in a way that's hard to describe. Beauty confronts us and convicts us in an uncomfortable manner. That which is undeniably beautiful holds an intrinsic value that reminds us that natural hierarchies are real, good, and inescapable. Beauty reminds us that there's a right way for things to be, and while we may not have yet achieved that right way of being, we must remain oriented towards the good and the true. In short, Beauty cuts through our nonsense excuses and demands that we become worthy of it. The world that the left has created is entirely artificial and requires an incredible amount of abstract nonsense to maintain its illusions. Progressives hate the idea of hierarchy, human nature, and unchosen bonds. Everyone must be equal. Everything must be interchangeable and everything must be disposable. Gender, marriage, family, community, and every other aspect of human identity can be redefined at a moment's notice. The compulsion to flatten every aspect of existence drives the left to sever the natural connections that define every person so they can be utterly remade. The individual must be isolated from his natural systems of support and made entirely dependent on the state if everyone is to be made truly equal. The best way to keep people trapped in an artificial environment is to deny them the knowledge that any alternative exists. Leftists in Western countries are tearing down statues, destroying priceless paintings, and burning down magnificent cathedrals for a reason. In one sense, this rabid cultural vandalism is like the defensive thrashings of a wild animal. Progressives reflexively strike out and mar that which is beautiful so it doesn't convict them in their own squalid existence. But there's a deeper method to this vile iconoclastic madness. The key to cultural revolution is to sever the continuity between the past and the present. If the left can successfully bury the beauty of the past, then the people will have no memory of what made them great, and they can instead be sculpted into whatever dismal monument to mediocrity our progressive elites have planned. Brutalist and depressing modern architecture, abstract and absurd modern art, formulaic and soulless modern movies are all engineered to ensure that we never glimpse that which makes us fully human. As hilarious as a trigger warning on a landscape painting may seem, 
the museum staff recognize the very real power that such works of art hold and the threat that they pose to the current progressive order. Leftists have worked very hard to eliminate the works of architectural, artistic, and musical beauty that might stir the soul to greatness, but the beauty of nature still remains. Even if our entire culture is stripped of the truth of beauty, the very rocks around us still cry out. One reason progressives feel so compelled to drive the population into squalid cities is their contempt for the natural beauty that keeps rural populations firmly connected to reality. Whether in the Soviet Union or the United States, leftists always revile the independent farmer. The independent farmer is self-sufficient, can't be controlled through the manipulation of a system on which he does not rely, and is too deeply rooted in the reality of nature to be taken in by absurd and artificial abstraction. Above all, progressives fear beauty because it threatens their way of life. The more artificial and abstract a system progressives construct to support their culture of lies, the more dangerous truth becomes. Cultural revolutionaries instinctively attack the true and beautiful because they see it as an assault on the small, ugly, and plastic world that they have constructed. While those in power work diligently to snuff out any instance of beauty left in our culture, they'll ultimately fail. As long as one rolling countryside, one soaring mountain range, one gleaming sea coast remains, the power and truth of beauty will still convict us. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to The Orrin McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do, leave a rating or review. It really helps with the algorithm magic. If you'd like to go ahead and follow me on Substack or Twitter or Gab or Instagram, if you'd like to get these videos on Odyssey or Rumble, the links to do all of that are down below in the description. If you'd like to go ahead and pre-order my upcoming book, The Total State, you can do that on Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble. Many of the big retailers have it there for you to pre-order. And of course, you can catch all of my columns and all of my shows over at The Blaze. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.